talk about uh, something a little bit different. It's the same subject matter, but it's a little bit different angle. Um, the benefits of fearing God. And I believe that one of the reasons why we don't see a mass revival in America and the reason why we don't see things going the way that God wants them to go in America is because we've lost the fear of God. If you look up the word fear of God, if you look up anything like that about trembling at his word or anything like that, the word tremble means to be shaking in awe and wonder when God speaks. See, the problem is, is that we've got a lot of preaching, but we have very little of God speaking. But when God speaks, that should tremble your heart. That should really make you shake. To know that the God of this universe, the God who spoke the worlds into order, the God who holds the waters in the hollow of his hand, speaks to you and I. That's powerful. So what I want to share with you really quickly is the five benefits of fearing God. The five benefits. Are we on Facebook yet? God bless you all on Facebook. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, those that are joined in Facebook. Uh, Sister Linda up in Maine, God bless you. And Sajiv in India, God bless you. We love you. Even though it's late at night there, it's about 9.30, 10, what's about 10, 10.30 over there now. God bless you. We love you. Praying for you, looking forward to the going in September to give out the uh, certificates of accomplishment for the Bible Institute, for His Glory Christian Assembly Bible Institute. God's moving. There's 12 more that want to come. That'll be, 20, that'll be another 12. And then he says, I can, I can bring as many as that they want to be trained. And so we'll see what God does. Amen? The five benefits of fearing God. The first benefit you will receive is found in Proverbs 14.26. And Pastor Tom will get that up there. Proverbs 14.26. You will receive strong confidence. You will receive strong confidence. In the fear of the Lord is what? Strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of what? Oh, come on, you can participate. The Lord is a strong, is a strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. What's a place of refuge? It's a place of safety. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have a healthy fear of God, you'll, you'll have strong confidence in who God is and what he's doing in your life, and his children, that's you and I, will have a place that we can run to, a place of refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. That's the first benefit. The second benefit you will receive is a refreshing and a resource for life. Verse 27, right here, the next one. The next verse. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Who wants to kill you? Satan. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to rob from you. But the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. In other words, Wherever that fountain of life touches, it produces life. So if you have the fear of the Lord, you're going to have a life that's overflowing. Hallelujah. You're going to have a life that's filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. You're going to have a life that's filled with holiness and righteousness and doing what's right and walking in the ways of the Lord and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. How many know that that's one of the biggest trials of today is walking in the Spirit, not in the flesh. But God says you have a, you'll receive a refreshing and a resource for life in the fear of God. The third benefit, you will add days to your life. How many like to live long? All right, we don't want to die tomorrow. Right? We want to live long. Well, you can add days of life to your life. Proverbs 10.27 Proverbs 10.27. You will add days to your life. Hallelujah. Now, I don't want to live so I'm so old that I can't move. In fact, I made a bargain with God. You know, anyone ever make bargains with God? I made a bargain with God. I said, God, I'll serve you all the days of my life, but I'm asking you one thing. The one thing I want, Lord, is the day that you know, or the time that you know I'm going to die. Let me have enough strength just walk up into a mountain and just sit down with my Bible and just close my eyes and go. 
That's what I like to do. That's my wish. I don't know if God will do it, but that's that's my wish. That's the way I want to go. I don't want to go in a nursing home, you know, uh, sitting in a wheelchair and nobody visiting me. You know, as much as I know that pastor appreciation is today, you know what they say, here today, gone tomorrow. You know, and so... Uh, so uh, I, uh, I'll take all the appreciation I can get right now. <laughs> you will add days to your life. Look at this. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And how true that is. If you want to live a long life, kids, the Bible says honor your parents in the Lord, for this is right, and you will add long life by being obedient to your parents. But also, the fear of the Lord will prolong your days. Because when you fear the Lord, you'll, you'll always seek Him and, and look to Him to find out what are the things He wants you to do and things He wants you involved in. The fourth will be the beginning of wisdom for you. Now, how many of you need wisdom? Amen. How many, of your, how many would say that their neighbor needs wisdom? Sometimes we look at some people, we say, man, you need some wisdom. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day. You know, I think I was talking to Joe the other day, and we were discussing things, and I said, you know, uh, you know, there are some Christians that drink alcohol still as a Christian. And I said, you know what? I said, they need to stop it because some of them need all the brain cells they can, they can get. Think about it. Alcohol kills brain cells. And there are some people out there that really, really need to keep the brain cells they have. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You'll be given wisdom, Proverbs 9, verse 10. Proverbs 9, verse 10. And the Bible says what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning, say the word beginning, of wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to apply the will of God and knowing how to apply it. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So if you want to get understanding, you've got to get knowledge. You've got to know your God. You've got to know who he's, what he's like. If you don't know God, then you're going to live a defeated life. If you don't know God, you're not going to have understanding. But see, like David and all the others, though they walked through the valley of the shadow of death, they feared no evil. Why? Because his rod and staff, they comforted him. They knew about God, who he was, his character, his integrity, of when he says something, he means it, and he doesn't go back on what he says. So no matter what we go through in life, if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if we fear the Lord, we'll submit ourselves to him, we'll commit our lives to him, we'll, we'll trust him, and when we do that, we will get the knowledge of God and, the Holy, and, and we will understand what he wants from us. Amen? Boy, it's quiet to me. And the fifth benefit of fearing God, you will learn the fear of the Lord. You will learn how to fear Him. Not to fear Him like He's ready to kill you, though He could. Not approaching Him in fear of punishment, but in adoration in holiness and righteousness, of understanding who this God is. See, what's happened in a lot of churches today, we have so much motivational speaking that we, we don't even include God's holiness, His righteousness, His power, His being, who He is, infinite in power, all majestic, all holy, righteous, the creator of heavens and earth. We don't, we don't bring that that Im immensity of who God is. And we bring God to, down to our level. When we do that, we lose the respect and the fear of God. He's God all by Himself. He's holy and He's righteous. He's all-powerful. Think about what I'm telling you now. Pay attention. He's all-powerful. Is He not? Then if He's all-powerful, what are you worrying about? You have nothing to worry about. He's all-powerful. He's your God. 
They that know their gods will do exploits because they know God's will and they'll, they'll do God's will. You don't have to be afraid. But what's the end of the matter? What's the end of the matter? The end of the matter is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. I'm trying not to take up too much time. Hebrews 12, 28. There it is. Wherefore, we, what? We're receiving a kingdom. This should get you excited. I mean, I, I, I think I'm, I'm preaching in a Presbyterian church today. We are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. It doesn't matter what the Republicans do, the Democrats do, the Independents do. It doesn't matter what the United States do, or all Iran, or Iraq, or China, or North Korea. It doesn't matter what they do. We have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. During the, the uh, Civil Rights Movement, they used to sing that song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Remember? I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Why? Because we have a kingdom that cannot, it didn't say may not, should not, it says it cannot. This kingdom cannot be moved. Hallelujah. 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 We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's going to come. It's coming. The ark is coming down the road. Hallelujah. He's coming. He's coming. And this kingdom cannot be moved. Do you, how many believe that? Not from here, from here. Believe that this morning. That you are part of a kingdom that cannot be moved. No matter if they started to kill Christians. They'll never wipe us out. Satan hates for you to know that you belong to a kingdom that cannot be moved. See, he belonged to a kingdom and his kingdom was moved from heaven down to hell. That's where his kingdom is. And he's trying to establish his kingdom on earth. But God has allowed us, hallelujah, to speak forth the things in his name that we will not be moved because we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And therefore, let us have what? Grace. Let us have grace. Whereby we may what? Serve God. Serve God by grace, not by works. When you serve God by works, it's because you have to. When you serve God by grace, it's because you want to. There's a big difference. So many people feel they have to serve God because they have to do that to go to heaven. But God wants you to serve him because you want to. Grace is, is wonderful, but it's also abused much today. Where may you may serve God, what? Acceptably. God receives your work because you want to, by grace, acceptable. But if you do it according to what you think he should be done, I, like, I just want to say this. I won't mention the person's name, but before I left for, um, for Nigeria, a person came up to me and said, I want to give you something. I said, oh, thank you. And the person said, yeah, I tried, to, I tried to talk God down, but he wouldn't listen. But did what God wanted, wanted them to do. See, God doesn't want you to do it because you, you have to. God wants you to do it because you want to. And that's a blessing. 
That's a real blessing to do it what God says, to do it with grace, whereby you may serve God acceptably with what? With reverence. Are you serving God with reverence? Reverentially? You know, when, when the Spirit of the Lord fell in Nigeria in that service, you could hear a pin drop. It was awesome. People were just worshiping and just crying out to God, and they were reverentially reverencing the fear of God. I spoke on this subject. But we're to serve God acceptably with reverence and with what? Godly fear. Not fear and trembling of, of punishment, but godly fear, knowing that we're in the presence of supremacy. We're in the, prison, we're in the, we're in the presence of a, per, of a person, of a God who holds all of the world in order. The one that spoke everything into existence. Just speaks it, and it's there. If God can speak the worlds into existence, can he speak to people's hearts to help you in a time of trouble? Amen. Praise the Lord. So the five benefits are these. You will receive strong confidence, Proverbs 14.26. You will receive refreshing and a resource for life, Proverbs 14.27. You will add days to your life, Proverbs 10.27. will be the beginning of wisdom for you, Proverbs 9.10. And you will learn the fear of the Lord, Deuteronomy 4, 10 to 12. Let's look at that for a moment. I forgot to share that with you. I just want to go back and reshare that. Deuteronomy 4, verses 10 and 12. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord, thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them to hear my words, that they may learn to what? So what's the purpose of gathering together to hear the word? It's to learn fear of God. I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me just for that service, just for that moment. No, all the days that they shall live upon And, not only that, that they may teach their children. Amen. Hallelujah. Next verse. And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. Imagine if that happened today. But you know, when Jesus comes again, the sky's going to roll back, the clouds are going to roll back, the, the firmament's going to roll back, and he's going to come with ten thousands of thousands of his saints. Come on. He's going to be riding on that white horse. And on his thigh is the word of God, faithful and true. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. He's coming back again that way in his majesty and power. He's not coming as the little lamb anymore, but he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Verse 12. And the Lord spoke unto you out of the midst of fire. You have heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. Has God ever spoken to you? Have you ever heard God speak to you? Many times you think it's just you. But God speaks to your heart. It's the same God. He hasn't changed. Amen? Real quickly, the five benefits are what? You will receive strong confidence. You will receive refreshing and resource for life. You will add days to your life and will be the beginning of wisdom for you, and you will learn the fear of the Lord. Amen? Okay, God bless. Who's, who's coming up now? Is that it? We can go eat? I'm hungry. <laughs>